Well, good morning, North Bend Church. Are you glad to be at church this morning? Man, we're so glad that you are here. Just a few announcements for you this morning is that next week, directly after service, we are having a baptism service right across the street and down on the left. It's at the Hogan's house. Uh, we're all going to form a line. Well, not a line, maybe, but we'll all walk together down there. If you want to be in single file, we can do that too. Uh, but we'll walk together down there. It's going to be an incredible time to watch people taking their next steps in faith. And you can still sign up for that. Just northbend.church slash baptism, I believe, and you can get on that list. And also, we are excited that October we are moving back into the building and we are moving forward. So we're excited about that season of the church uh, and having some exciting things that Pastor Jason is going to share with you in just a few moments. Well, hey, I'm glad again that you guys are here. So let's stand to our feet and let's begin to worship. been, there will never be a 
God like you, a love so true, there has never been, and there will never be, a God like you, a love so true, there has never been, there will never be, a God like you. So true, there's never been, there will never be a God like you, a love so true. Oh, how great, how great, how great is your love, how great, how great, how great. Far beneath 
Father, today we give you praise for you are good and you are here in this place where two or three are gathered, you are there in the midst. So Lord, we just thank you for being here, meeting with us today as the church. Father, I pray that all hearts and minds would be clear in this moment, God. I pray that you've been glorified through the praise and the worship of your people. And I pray, Lord God, that we would leave this place differently than we came, Lord God. As we hear the word, I pray, God, it would challenge us, it would change us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give God some praise. Turn around. Give someone a head nod or something. You can be seated. Uh, I just want to go over a few things real quick before I jump into the word today. Um, Coming up, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, the 16th, we are going to be having a relaunch night, a relaunch night. If you're wondering what that is, okay, everybody is because it's a new thing. Something we're doing is we're preparing to go back into the building in October. I'm incredibly excited to, uh, to move forward in this season. I know it's been an interesting time, an uncertain time, uh, but if you have not seen the video yet, uh, we talked a little bit about uncertainty, but we b- believe we still serve a God of certainty. And so we're moving forward with so many plans that we had Uh, Before COVID-19 hit, uh, we had a a video released this week about the expansion of the church, which is not behind me, by the way, if you're wondering what's going on here. This whole field is not going to be the new church, which apparently is a new rumor out. I'm just letting it ride and letting it roll. Not even going to say anything about it. But we are adding an addition on the front of the building, give us some space for a nice new entrance and uh, also some office space and building in the kids' facility area that's kind of been an outside connector Uh, for several years now. We're excited about that, but we also are excited about regathering in the church because we believe it's vital, we believe it's essential, and we're going to move forward in that. And so with that said, I know it's been a a time of uncertainty for so many people, 
And uh, as far as teams go, maybe you were serving on a team. If you served on a team in any capacity, any way over the years past, would you just lift your hand up? If you served on any kind of team, look at all those hands going up all over this field. So many great and amazing people that make a service happen here week in, week out at North Bend Church. And so what we want to do is we really just want to regather and have a relaunch uh, because our teams obviously are a bit scattered. We're not sure who... Who wants to move forward and serve and who doesn't? We want to respect all those and, and what their thoughts are through this time and season. But I also do know that we, we have to move forward as the leadership of the church. And so we want to take a Wednesday night and just have a relaunch night. And so essentially what that's going to look like is uh, everybody that was signed up on the team before, essentially we're going to have a clean slate. If you're, if, you're, if you're signed up right now to serve in a specific area and you still want to do that, obviously you can do that, continue to serve where you're serving. But there's been so much scattering right now in this season. We just want to make sure we have everybody on board that wants to be on board as we move forward with teams and make services happen here so we can be clear as leadership where we're going, where we're headed, who's on teams, who's not. And so relaunch night is going to be next Wednesday, the 16th. We'll be coming out with some videos about that to kind of uh, let everybody know. Obviously, I know this is not a great weekend to announce something on Labor Day weekend. I realize that. But we'll be coming out with some videos to let everybody know a little bit more about what that's going to look like. So relaunch night next Wednesday, the 16th. It's going to be a great time, and I'm just excited to move the church forward, ready for it. Uh, we've been talking about the scattered church, the scattered church in the book of James. James comes out in that book, and he addresses the church as the scattered church. And as we learned in the first message uh, James was talking about the persecuted church, talking to the persecuted church, those who are being scattered abroad. And we get to this section in James today where he talks about faith and deeds. Faith and deeds. Maybe some translations say faith and works. And so I just want to start with a question today. What is faith? What is faith? I'm sure there are many different definitions for that today, uh, culturally, but also even within the church, when you ask, what is faith? Many people have many different ideas. So is it faith by our belief and our trust, or is it faith by the things that we do? Is it faith by belief and trust, or faith by the things that we do? That's what James is dealing with in this section of scripture that we're going to look at today. James is dealing with some, something that was obviously up for debate with these new Jewish converts. But I believe it's also something that is up for debate within the church today. The struggle between two truths, faith and deeds. Faith and deeds. Father, today I pray that your word would go forth, would affect the heart and life of every person here today. I pray that you would help me to speak it and preach it with clarity. God, I pray that after this service today, God, we would have a better understanding of what faith is, but also how to operate in it in our life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's go to James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. James 2, verses 14 through 26. I'm going to read this in its entirety. It's a decent section of scripture, but let's just read through it together. It says this, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and be well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, it, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I'll show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. I love the bit of sarcasm that I sense there with James as he's writing this letter. He says, you foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was a credit to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous 
by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works or deeds is dead. There's a lot in this passage of Scripture today, and I want to do my best to unpack a lot of it today. But I want to start by being very clear in this message today because I don't want you to start with the wrong idea or the wrong direction of where this text or where I'm going today. Good deeds don't make you right before God. But when you are made right before God, you want to do good deeds. I'm going to say that again and be very clear. Good deeds don't make you right before God. But when you are made right before God, you want to do good deeds. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I I don't do things for God to get him to love me. I do things for God because he has loved me. You understand that? There's a big difference. So I'm not setting up or preaching today a works-based system or salvation. But understand this. Outward works are a byproduct of an inward work. Are you with me? Outward works are a byproduct of inward works. I don't do things for God for him to love me. I do things for God because he loves me. And this text today, it deals with two truths. Now, I know that's a bit countercultural. It seems like you can't believe two truths in our modern culture. Can I tell you that you can believe two things that are equally true? Did you know this? Everybody know this? Someone give me a big amen real quick. Make sure you're there, all right. We're alive and ready to go in this Labor Day weekend. I want to make sure of it. I want to talk about the tale of two truths just for a moment. If you believe in one truth, you do not have to discard the other truth. We've been talking and hearing a lot about truth here in these messages on these great outdoor weekends. Because I think truth is vitally important for our culture For where we are, truth is vitally important for the church as we move forward for Jesus Christ. And truth is of the utmost importance. And today we're dealing really with two truths. Faith and deeds. Faith and deeds. And it needs to be both. Can I just say that we we have to have faith and we have to have deeds. And that's what James is beginning to unpack to the early church. The church and the world for that matter often separate things to create dividing lines. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. There's some dividing lines within our culture. There's some dividing lines within the church. And I just want to say that oftentimes, both things that we're trying to address can be true. And James is addressing faith, and he's addressing deeds. Some people are saying, well, it's all about faith, and other people are saying, well, it's all about works. It's all about what you do. So there was a bit of discord, I believe, between the early Jewish Christians. And so I just want to talk about the church today. I don't want to get into all the facets of the world. We don't have enough time for that. But for the church, I just want to give you a few examples of kind of what the church does. This is what the church does to create dividing lines. And probably a lot of you have been involved in church long enough that you know what I'm getting ready to say is absolutely true. Remember, we're talking about the tale of two truths. So within the church, are we missional or are we attractional? Are we missional or are we attractional? Do we love the word of God, the preaching of the word of God, or do we love worship? Do we believe in the sovereignty of God or the freedom or free will of man? Do we preach grace or do we preach truth? Is it faith or is it deeds? Can I tell you that it's both? It's both. We are a missional church, and I believe a missional church should be attractive in the world. People should see it like a lighthouse. The Bible says we're we're like a city on a hill. Are you with me? It's attractive, isn't it? When, when When you start a fire, people want to gather around it, don't they? It gathers people. That's what the church does. So the church is missional, yes, but the church also is attractional. Do we 
love the Word of God? Absolutely. Do we love worship? Yes. And people try to create dividing lines. Well, yeah, well, they're all about singing at that church. They're all about music. We're actually all about both. We love the Word. We love worship. Do we believe in the sovereignty of God or do we believe in the freedom of man? Both. I believe God is sovereign, but he has also allowed us to have choice in our life. To choose this day who you will serve. I think you get it. We've been talking a little bit about truth intention. And I, I hope you understand this, this idea about truth intention. And I, and I love grace and truth for these two ideas because grace and truth are held in equal tension with one another. If you preach all grace and no truth, the tension will cause it, the lack of tension rather, on the tent will cause it to fall. You preach all truth and no grace, the lack of tension on the tent will cause it to fall. But if you preach grace and truth as equal truths, truth is held in tension. And so as Christ followers, we should desire to have faith and also desire to show deeds, to have good works, to show forth our good deeds to the world around us. Why? Because deeds is what makes Christ known. Did you know that? Deeds, works, how we live out our life, that is representation of Jesus Christ on this earth. How we live, how we walk, how we talk, our interaction with people. There should be a connection, I believe, between our heart, between our hands, and between the things we do. Are you with me? Let me say it this way. There should be a connection between our heart, our head, and our hands. If you believe it here, it will eventually make its way here. Are you with me? You know, I, I'm not going to preach too hard against this statement. People say things like, well, I had the right intention. Well, listen, if you have the right intention over and over and over again, eventually you're going to do what you, you intend, intend to do. Does that make sense? Well, I had the right intention. I just didn't follow through. Well, eventually, if you have the right intention, if your heart, if your heart believes a thing, then your hands will begin to do a thing. If your heart believes it, your hands will do it. So there should be a connection between our heart, our head, and our hands. And might I also add today that faith is not and should not be invisible. Faith is not and should not be invisible. Some of you all probably heard statements like this too. Well, it's just a thing between me and God. I, I love the doctrines we make up and place inside the church. Well, it's just, you know, it's a faith, it's a personal thing. Well, sure, it's a personal thing, but when you have a personal relationship, if you claim to have a personal relationship with the living God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, at, at some point, I believe that personal relationship comes out and is public. Are you with me? That the world around us will begin to see what is inside of us. The world around us will begin to see the light that is within us. People will begin to notice, like the diesel, to my left, your right. People notice it. They can't help but notice it, right? Why? Because it's made its way on the outside. Faith is not invisible. If you have the right heart, it will make its way to your hands. Faith and deeds is what makes Jesus known. And, and my prayer right now more than anything for the church is that we would make Jesus known. Are you with me? Make Jesus known above and beyond everything anything else above and beyond your, your ideas of culture and politics and all these other things, make Jesus known. What is our response in the midst of the world? Faith and deeds. Making Jesus known should be the biggest desire of our heart as Christ followers. Now, I'm not going to stand up here today and tell you that what I'm saying is incredibly easy. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Showing forth good deeds toward humanity, especially in the time and season that we're in right now, is a difficult thing to do. That is why it's important to surrender and to submit 
our ways to Jesus every single day. Amen? There is a faith that is complete. How many desire complete faith? Complete faith. I love your willingness to raise your hand without even exactly knowing where I'm going. I, that just shows trust. I appreciate that. I desire a, a complete faith. And the word of God actually in this section we, we already mentioned talks about what complete faith is. And I want to read verses 21 and 22 again. It's about Abraham, the father of our faith. The father of our faith. Listen, was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did? when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. Get this, verse 22. You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. Abraham's faith was not made complete because he simply believed God. Abraham's faith was made complete because of what he did. He, he, he was willing to even give his son which is also a representation, a picture of what God did for us with Jesus Christ. He was willing to give his son and go through with this process to say, Lord, I trust you, I believe you, but I also do what you ask me to do. That's not always easy. It's easy to say I believe. It's a lot harder to live out my belief. Don't, wouldn't you agree with that? It's easy to say I, I'm a Christian. It's easy to say, well, you know, I, I believe Jesus. He, he's my Savior privately, but it's difficult to live out those things publicly. I know this might seem pretty straightforward, but I, I figure I just might as well not hold back. Faith without action is just an idea that we did not believe enough in to do. I'll say it again. Faith without action is just an idea that we did not believe enough in to do. Are you with me? We can say we believe something all day. We can say we have faith for God to do something all day. But if we don't do it, then our faith and our deeds is not matching up. Faith without action is just an idea we didn't believe enough in to do. But here's the good news. Our faith is more attached to what is ahead than what's behind us. That's the beautiful thing about faith is that faith is always calling us forward. Because I know, me just like you, in our past, we have so many mistakes. We have so many things that we've missed the mark at, so many things we've failed at, so much sin in our past. But faith always calls us forward. It's more attached to what is ahead than what is behind. We can look to the faith of those behind us to encourage us, though, for the things ahead. That's why the Word of God is so vitally important. Because we can look to those who have come behind us and say, look, look what they did. And if they did it, we can do it. Are you with me? That's not blasphemy there. That's not heresy there. That is simply saying, look to the past, look to those who have went before us, and let's live like they lived. Let's do what they did. Amen? It's interesting that James ends off this section of Scripture with Rahab, the prostitute. I love how they just kind of slide that in there. They couldn't have just said, hey, it was Rahab. It's Rahab, the prostitute. If you, if, if you haven't read that story, go back in the Old Testament and read the story. Sometimes when the Bible says things like, I'm just so interested, why, why would you do that? Like, why would you say that? You know, the Bible doesn't just say things to say it. There's a reason for it. Are you with me? And in this last section, get this, the last section of Scripture about faith and deeds, James brings up Rahab, the prostitute. It says this, verse 25, in the same way was not even Rahab, the prostitute, considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. I'm going to just kind of sum up the story. Rahab, by faith, did something that God desired her to do. She did not stand back and say, well, I want to do this thing. I think this thing's good. No, she did what God placed in her heart to do. So her faith and her deeds were working together. They were made complete. But again, interesting. 
that of all the people, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Daniel, you, you, you go, go, on, go on the list and name the great fathers of our faith, the patriarchs, all, all of the great stories. But you, James, you picked a story that is very obscure, and I would say that many of you today may not know that story, and that's okay. That kind of just adds to the point I think James is making. I believe he's saying this. Faith was not about who she was, but it was about what she did. Notice how it said she was the prostitute. It was a label of who she was. Are you with me? But that did not determine what she did. It was not about who she was, her past. It was about what she did. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're watching from. Maybe you're online. I'm not sure. Maybe you're here today. Understand this. Your past does not have to determine your present and it certainly does not have to determine your future. Amen. We got to understand that when it comes to faith and deeds, don't get caught up in the things you used to do, who you used to be, where you used to go. Think, I am present right now in the present. God, what do you, what do you want to do in and through my life? Because my past does not have to determine my present, and my past does not have to determine the direction my life is headed because I have a future in Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you today to now walk in the things God is declaring in and over your life. Now begin to walk in and do what you say you believe. Now is the time. Now is the time to live for Jesus Christ, to be a light in the midst of the darkness and to be the hands and feet of Jesus on this earth today. Do you believe that? Amen. Let's stand to our feet this morning. I just simply want to pray today uh, for you that God would open up doors of opportunity for you to speak into the life of others. I want to be very clear. You know, it's not just my job to speak into people's lives. It's your job. It's our job. Why? Because we are the church. And so I, I just want to pray today that we would have the heart to say, Lord, I, I've had faith for so many things, but Lord, I want to walk in and do what you ask me to do. Lord, I want to speak into the, the neighbor's lives that I've been thinking about for some time now. I, I, wanna, I wanna get with my family that, that I've been praying for for so many years. I wanna, I wanna talk to that friend that I've been thinking about. Lord, I, I want to do what you're placing on my heart to do. And I believe that the Holy Spirit of God can empower you to do that. Understand this, it's not always easy. It's not always, always comfortable, but God has not called us to a life that is easy or is comfortable. We wanna be faithful. We want to be effective for the kingdom of God. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And God, thank you for your people. God, I believe today that you're doing something in the heart and in the life of every person here in this field today. Maybe someone watching online as well. God, I believe that you're going to open up doors of opportunity for us to speak life into those around us. You're opening up doors of opportunity, God, and giving us boldness to step into the things we've been feeling in our heart. Lord God, may there be a connection between our heart, our head, and our hands. And the things that we believe, may they begin to come out of us, and may we show them to the world around us. Lord God, strengthen your people today. Bring peace to your people today. May we walk in the goodness of who you are. And if there's someone here today, Lord God, that does not know you as Savior, that does not know you as Lord, someone watching, Lord, right now in this moment, just may they say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I give all that I am to you. I believe that you died on a cross for me, and I believe that you rose again, and I place my trust in you. God, you are good, we love you, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, let's give God some praise.